All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is one that has been requested a lot, and I think a lot of people would like some um, kind of guidance on how to do this, and it's going to be on maintaining and storing your traditional knives. So um, in particular, GEC knives are very often, most often, uh, not stainless steel. Uh, they come in you know, 1095 steel. Uh, there are other, you know, types of steel you might be interested in maintaining, like cases CV steel, or even something like a D2 on a queen knife, or, you know, whatever other brand. And uh, it's something that people who are coming in from the modern knife world, where almost always, but not always, most often by far, knives come in a stainless steel, like 154 CM. And so you don't have to do as much maintenance. Maybe you, you know, take it apart if it's really dirty or something. I don't even really do that that much. Uh, but maybe you put a little bit of oil on it every now and then. But pretty much you don't have to maintain the knife other than sharpening. Um, and if you're interested in sharpening, I do have a video on that. I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, but that's kind of a separate topic here. For these traditional knives that have a little bit of a different build to them, so they don't have the screws, you can't really take them apart as easily. You can take them apart, but it's a lot, lot harder to get them back together. Um, and they are often in non-stainless steels. There's a different, you know, kind of level of maintenance that's needed. So the first thing I'll talk about here is patina. So you can see that this knife, which is a case uh, copperhead, this is the 2021 vault knife, has some patina on it here from use. And that's because this is a non stainless steel, it's cases CV or chrome vanadium. Um, and that's something that people go back and forth on whether they like that patina or not. But whether or not you like it, you don't want it to get to the point of being pepper spots or, or rust, small spots of rust, or even, you know, big spots of rust. Uh, if you get a whole bunch of heavy rust that you can feel with your fingernail, um, that's even kind of outside of the scope of this video. Uh, you might use steel wool. Uh, there's there's rust erasers that you can get, but that's uh, even kind of outside of the scope of this. This is more about maintaining rather than restoring. Uh, so to keep from getting those pepper spots or having it turn into rust, sometimes you might want to you know polish off the patina slightly. And uh, Flitz is one option. So Flitz is a metal polish uh, that you can use, and I do use sometimes, but that's more if you want to get the knife, again, more of a restoration, completely clean of any etch, uh, either etching or patina. But something that I use much more frequently than Flitz, and you can see that it has faded a lot here, is the Sunshine Polishing Cloth. So this is something that I think I saw about them on, on Blade Forums a long, long time ago, you know, several years ago, and have been using since. And, I, and I've really, you know, enjoyed them. I think that they're a really good product. Uh, so what it is, it's basically a, a microfiber cloth that has a polishing compound, um, you know, it kind of impregnated into the cloth. Uh, so it's something you can get on Amazon. I'm sure you can get it on eBay and stuff, but I always get them on, on Amazon. You can see it is made in the USA. And I'll give you a look at what this looks like here. And one thing, um, when I first got these, I used them until they got kind of black like this and then, you know, would throw them away. But you can keep using them for a long time. I mean, some of these I've used for, for years before they get too, you know, used up. But basically, you just, you know, get the cloth and you rub it on the blade and... It's going to start, you know, taking some of that patina off. It polishes the, the metal. You can use this to polish, you know, the bolsters, which if they're starting to get, you know, scuffed up or scratched up can be a nice thing to do. Even some handle materials, it will polish up a little bit. But really, uh, these sunshine claws are good for polishing that patina off so that it doesn't get, you know, turn into true rust or oxidation. So I'm a really big fan of these polishing claws, uh, sunshine cloth. I also actually use these as strops. Um, it's like a very, very fine strop. And I found that they work well for that. So I'm a big fan of these. And I think that's probably the first thing to go for if you want to just, you know, take a little bit of that patina off and not necessarily completely take it back to, you know, a factory 
polish there. So if you need to do that, you might want to use flits, but it's a little bit of a, a different process. Um, so that's the first thing, you know, I, I like to, to do if a knife is getting a little bit too patinaed or moving towards rust. Um, and uh, the next thing is after that, you want to wipe it off. You don't want to leave that polishing compound on. So I have a, a, a little tip here with doing that. So this is my um, oil, which I'll get to in a second, and two microfiber cloths. And the reason for that is I always use one of these first. And so this is just one that came with a, a modern knife, um, but I'll use this one first to get that polishing compound off and start to kind of clean the blade. And you can use this one to clean the blade if there's, you know, gunk from from tape or something like that. You know, you can use this if you don't want to use a paper towel. And one reason you might not want to use a paper towel is that sometimes they can be a little bit of abrasive enough that if, if a knife has a very high polish like, you know, a case typically does, you might be able to see some very light scratches from just a um, paper towel, uh, especially if you use a, a, a sponge, you know, you know, like a Brillo or something like that, those will scratch. So I don't recommend doing that unless you intentionally want to create that type of finish. Um, but a microfiber cloth like this shouldn't scratch. And um, the second reason that I use this this cloth first on, on a dirty knife uh, is because I wouldn't want to use this cloth on a knife that is a non-user. Um, so like a, a collection piece that I don't want to get any scratches, I want to be really careful with. I wouldn't use this cloth on it just because it is getting that polishing compound, you know, put off into it or, you know, I guess rubbed off into this cloth. So you wouldn't want to polish a non-user, something like uh, this is my beer scout, a uh, funny story with the beer scouts. I just wasn't that into them when they came out and realized that they were cool later. So um, I did get one from Charlie Companion at the rendezvous. Um, but I wouldn't use that cloth or a sunshine cloth on this knife because either way with the polishing compound coming off onto this cloth and it being impregnated into the um, polishing cloth, the sunshine cloth, it's gonna kind of start to rub that etch off and I wanna keep that etch on there. So I don't recommend using either flits or you know a sunshine cloth or even your dirty cloth on a non-user that you wanna keep the etch on because it will start to wear that etch away. So that's one thing, but I also wouldn't wanna use a paper towel on it because I wouldn't wanna scratch it up. But once I've used this on a user knife, I'll then go to this. And this cloth, this second cloth, is more of applying oil. So when you are maintaining a non-stainless knife like this, you want to apply oil if, if you're polishing it. That'll just stop it from rusting. It'll help, you know, create that film that will, you know, stop moisture from, from sitting on the blade. Now, there are a lot of different types of oil that people use. There's some really fancy oils, um, you know, all kinds of different things. The only thing I really use ever, except maybe WD-40 sometimes, uh, if something is really, really gunky and needs, you know, cleaned out, is mineral oil. So you can see that this is in a snoot nasal and sinus cleanser sprayer bottle. This was recommended by, I believe, someone on Blade Forms a while back. I looked before this making this video and I can't find these anymore on Amazon. I'm not sure if they can be found. Um, but you can use other things. I mean, you can just use, you know, a little dropper bottle, something like for, you know, eye wash or something like that. You don't need a lot. That's why it's in this is that you, you can, you know, I, I bought a 16 ounce, I think, bottle of mineral oil. Um, I don't even know, like four years ago, something like that. And I'm like halfway through it at most. Uh, so you, you use a very small amount. You don't need a lot of it. And all I use is, is this mineral oil. It works really well on pivots. It's a good viscosity in my opinion. Um, it is very good at protecting against, you know, oxidation. It doesn't run off of the blade as much as something like WD-40 or some of the more, you know, I guess more viscous or less viscous. I think more viscous. Uh, th you know, types of oil. 
the more runny types of oil. Uh, and it is also food safe. Um, so it's actually, you know, mineral oil is used as a laxative. So you can definitely, you know, not, you can use it on knives that you use for food and not worry about it, uh, which is not the case for all oils. So I really like it, mineral oil. It was actually suggested to me again by Charlie Campania at I think the first rendezvous that I went to in 2014. So um, it's worked well for me. And uh, what I do here is I take, you know, this thing and you can just do the same thing with a Q-tip or something and just put just like a teensy little bit. That's enough for that side of the blade. Put a little bit more over here. And this is actually more than you really need actually. Um, and then I'll take this cloth, which is the clean cloth, and I will just rub that oil across the blade so that again, it creates kind of a covering, a film. Get the spine, you know, get the, the tang, make sure you don't cut yourself and get that all over that blade so that it, it does cover the whole thing and can kind of stick to it without being super, super greasy and grimy, you know. Um, you don't want to have so much that it's going to like make your pocket oily. Uh, and then I would do the same thing on the other blade. I'm not going to do it now because this, this knife actually isn't in too bad shape, but and then I also like to do on the on the back springs. Now I believe on case knives that these back springs are stainless steel. I'm not 100% sure on that, but on GECs, GEC knives, they are generally the same steel as the blade. So I'll just put a little bit there like that and just rub that on there like so. Now it doesn't hurt to put mineral oil in my opinion, and I'm not an expert on, you know, woods and, and stuff on, uh, you know, wood covers or bone covers, uh, it shouldn't, shouldn't hurt it. Um, but, you know, take that with, you know, a grain of salt. I, I'm not an expert on, you know, maintaining wood or bone covers. Uh, it's just, I've used it without issue. And then last here, what I would do is just put a teensy little bit. I mean, like that, that is enough. You can see how small that is there. And each pivot, and just open and close it a few times, like so. Now, if when you open and close it, there's, you know, a bunch of sometimes, actually really frequently on GEC knives and case knives, and especially Rough Rider knives, when you first get them and oil them, there's going to be some like black gunk type stuff that comes out when you put that oil in and open and close it a few times. If black gunk stuff is coming out, I would recommend using that dirty cloth unless you know you really really want to be careful about getting the um knife scratched up or anything like that in that case you could use the clean cloth and it shouldn't be too too big of an issue you can just wash the cloth or get another one um so that's that's how i apply oil now let's say that there is you know something down in this blade well there's not really here but i have this kind of cool little tool from Don Southern Knives. It is falling apart a little bit. I need to re-glue that, but um, this is specifically made for cleaning that. So I would definitely recommend going from the pivot side away from the pivot side here, like so. And you'll get some, you know, some of that gunk out and stuff. If you don't have the chance to or don't want to buy a tool like that, you can also do what I've done probably for most of the time that I've been cleaning knives and just use a paper towel fold that paper towel up a few times, fold it over so that you get a little bit of like a point there, and then just do the same thing. So, you know, try to get it down to the back spring and pull it through, and you'll get a little bit of that gunk out. And I think that usually works. If you have uh, moisture down in the blade well, which sometimes happens if you're cleaning the knife or, you know, using it in a wet environment, something like that, I would suggest cleaning it first. So doing that with, you know, a, a normal paper towel and then doing it uh, with some oil in there also. Put a little bit of mineral oil either on the paper towel or down in the blade well and run that through there so that you get some oil in there. Um, and that's pretty much how I oil and clean knives. Now, again, if there's a whole bunch of gunk on the blade, you might use, you know, something to, to help clean it off. Like, you know, a little bit of rubbing alcohol or something, but be aware if you have to do that, you know, it's, it's going to affect the patina of the knife uh, or the finish of the knife on a non-stainless knife, and it could even on a stainless knife. Um, so 
I would only do that on a user. I try not to do it much at all. Uh, I usually just try to rub rub whatever is on the blade off with you know oil and a, a cloth like this. Um, so that's kind of maintaining the knife. And again, sharpening is a, a different subject, which you know I'll link the video. And you know restoring a knife is is a different subject also. But what about storing the knife? So you know putting the knife away when you're not using it and you know keeping it as such. Well, for a user, you don't have to do too much else. Um, for my users, I do what I just did here after I you know, carry and use the knife. And then I basically set it in a tackle box. I use a tackle box that has a few different layers and you know, long slots for tackle for fishing. Uh, but I place the knives in there. I do have them sitting on a microfiber cloth that's cut out to fit the, the slots. Um, just so they don't, you know, slide around when I carry the tackle box around with me and uh, get scratched up and such. But that's pretty much all I do. I set them in there and they're good to go. Because if you, you know, put this oil on before you um, put them away, they shouldn't get too much, you know, rust or anything like that. Especially if you're using them frequently, if you're cycling through. One of the biggest things that I have found with my users is that if I don't use them in a long time, that's when they start to get rust, you know, stuff like that. So the more frequently you use them, the less likely that you're going to get some, you know, extreme rust that you can't just polish off with the sunshine cloth. Um, and speaking of, we'll move this stuff out of the way here. Um, but as for storing your, you know, your collection pieces, your your ones that you're you're not using, um, or maybe you're you know, using very infrequently, I do suggest storing them in their tubes. Um, so that's true, you know, whether it is a GC knife that comes in a tube or something like a queen that comes in its box, I store those ones that aren't being used frequently or at all in the tubes. So we can talk about that here. Now, a lot of knives, most traditional knives, come with some sort of... I guess you would say anti-tarnish or anti-rust wrapping on the inside. And GECs come with this, what they call wax paper. But as you can see, it pretty easily gets worn out. It, it you know, crinkles and then starts to rip and such. So, you know, you can get more of this. You can buy it from GEC, I believe, but you can definitely buy it online. I know somebody on the GECC or Gradation Cutlery Club Facebook group sells it sometimes. Um, but it, it's something you can buy, but I also tend to not buy it. I, I tend to do something a little differently. So what I would do for a knife like this, and again, this is a non-user here, um, is I'm actually going to wipe the blade off just because I was handling it a little bit there. Um, but wipe the blade off, make sure it is, you know, nice and dry and such, and, um, put a little oil on it before you put it away. So I'll put some oil on this one. And again, same process here. Uh, I would do this even when you get a GEC, like when you first get it, um, I would I would do all this. I would put a little oil on the pivot, put a little oil on the blades, because although they do come with the oil, and I think everybody who's gotten a GEC knows that it's, you know, it's kind of a, a unique smell, not in a bad way, it's kind of a nice smell if you, I guess if you enjoy the GEC knives, um, but it's something that's kind of recognizable, I guess I would say, but, even still, I would oil them, put them away, try not to touch them with your hands while you're putting them away, you know, just touch it with the cloth. And that way, you don't have to worry about leaving, you know, some of that hand oil or moisture on there. And then I would put it in its wax paper, as long as you still have that wax paper. You can see this wax paper isn't even like as big as GEC wax paper normally is. And then what I'll do is I'll also put it in a just you know a ziploc bag and ziplocs a brand whatever type of bag you want this isn't actually a ziploc brand this is whatever aldi's brand is but basically a zip top bag uh this is just a, a sandwich style it doesn't really matter too much it's just going to hold that knife in there um you know keep it from getting too much moisture keep it from rubbing against the sides because one thing to be aware of here is that these gc tubes this is cardboard on in here, and it will kind of scratch up the bolsters on a knife. You do have to be aware of that, that 
This cardboard on the inside, it's pretty rough and it will scratch up the bolsters if you let it. So you don't want that right on a, you know, one of your prize collection pieces. Then I just roll this up like so, try to get all the air out of it and I'll fold it over like that. That's gonna help hold it in place in the tube and then just slide that in the tube. Now, sometimes, you know, putting a Ziploc bag like this, it's gonna be a little bit tighter fit in the tube uh, lengthwise, but it usually works pretty well. Um, the other thing that I have done in the past is put a um, uh, desiccant packet. So one of those little packets that actually GEC knives come with now in the tube. At the time that this knife was made, they didn't use those, um, so it doesn't have one and I haven't bought more recently, but now GEC is putting those in the tubes. I would just include that in there. Um, I think either way is gonna be fine. You can put it in the Ziploc bag or just in the tube, and either way is gonna be fine. And just put that back on there and you're good to go. Now, how I store the tubes themselves is I have some ammo cans. Uh, so just like, I think I bought them from Walmart. I have, um, you know, couple different versions uh, but any type of storage device I mean I know people some people use like under the bed boxes um, you know just like plastic boxes it really doesn't matter too much once it's in this you know in the tube as long as it's not getting you know wet or dirty or something like that as long as it is enclosed in some way the tube will be all right now the tube is collectible in some cases and, and this is a good example here the beer scout knives have this particular tube art that is different than the normal titty tube art so this is the normal titty tube art this is the beer scout specific art and other knives like you know charlie companions often have a really cool tube art and right up on the back so if it's a collection piece you might want to you know make sure that that doesn't get scuffed up too much and you could store them in a certain way to, to stop that for example, you might put each tube in its own bag. So this is uh, just a, like a, what you might call a team bag, I think they call it. Uh, it's actually what this really cool sheath from Collector Knives came in. Give them a little shout out there. But you could store them like so. Uh, and that would keep the tube a little bit safer. Now, I don't do that. I haven't had really any issues with um you know tubes getting messed up from from sitting next to each other haven't had anyone complain about a knife that i've sold uh having any tube issues so that would be a step beyond what i do but it is definitely an option um now moving into some other knives so for example queen knives i think boger knives um and you know rough rider knives and such if you're going to be storing a rough rider um, come in boxes rather than tubes. So you can do the same thing here. I actually don't have this one in a Ziploc bag. Really beautiful knife, by the way. Might as well show this one off too. This is a Queen in Sheffield Jig Pearl, which is, whoops, <laughs> which is really cool here. Um, so Queen certainly could make some really nice knives uh, at one point. But you could do the same thing, you know, wrap it up in its uh, wax paper. Although, in my opinion, the, the wax paper that Queen Knives came in and that uh, Case Knives come in and even Rough Riders, uh, other than the Rough Rider Reserve Knives come in, is not very good for wrapping it up. It's too flimsy. Uh, so you could put that in a very small Ziploc bag or something like that, and that would probably be a good way to do it. One other type of knife that I wanted to mention here is Northwoods knives. Let me grab it. So Northwoods knives come in a bag rather than a tube. And these ones that are made by GEC, which, you know, this is the most recent one. I believe there are more, at least one more coming. That's more of a rumor than like a, a confirmed fact, but uh, I, I think that there will be one more made by GEC at least. They come in these bags and some people uh, store them in their, their leather pocket slip that they come with. I recommend against doing that. And the reason for that is because although these are really nice slips that these Northwoods come with and will not tarnish as easily as some other leather slips, 
they will tarnish if you leave the knife in leather uh, for too long and it's not oiled. Um, leather, especially, you know, nicely tanned leather like this, uh, has some things in it that will um, start to tarnish. So what I recommend instead is often these Northwoods knives come with a little um, coin, which, you know, coins are cool, but I'm not super into. And the coin normally comes in its own separate bag like such. I recommend putting the knife in that separate bag, uh, oiling it and everything like I showed earlier, putting it in this bag, and then that will keep it, you know, from getting tarnished from the leather or getting, you know, hit by this coin and it should keep it in a little bit better shape. So that's my recommendation for Northwoods knives, which come in these bags is don't keep them in their leather slip. That's a general rule too. Um, you know, I do break the rule every now and then for users, but for a non-user, you definitely don't want to keep a knife in a leather sheath. And that includes, and I'll show this one again, that includes fixed blades. You generally wouldn't want to keep a non-stainless knife in a leather sheath. Although again, I break that rule sometimes. But that is a, a rule that people say a lot of the time. So um, that's really how I maintain my knives, how I store them. Again, there are other ways of doing it. It's not, I'm not saying that this is the best way. It's just how I do it, how I've come to, you know, have a system in the years that I've been buying, collecting, using, carrying, and enjoying um, traditional knives and especially non-stainless traditional knives. So I hope this video was helpful. I know that it's kind of long, um, but it is, like I said, one that a lot of people have requested and uh, I've seen a lot of questions about how to do all this. So I hope that this has been helpful. If so, go ahead and hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and then hit the bell for notifications so you know when I post new videos. Also check out my social media, Instagram, Facebook, and such at Knife Thoughts, and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles about knives and knife-related topics, and I have some cool gear too. Um, so as always, last but not least, don't forget to go out and do good.